So we're continuing on with our discussion about the fact that uh, the place where the problem is is our self. Even though the experience is, is that other people and events cause us our unhappiness, what has presented us in Vedanta is that the unhappiness that we're experiencing is the unhappiness of being an unhappy person. In other words, what happens is, is that events happen, there's a reaction in us, and what arises is a sense of self that's unhappy, that's angry, that's frustrated, that's bored, but it's always a sense of who I am, a particular kind of person, suffering. So it's centered on identity. Now, the interesting thing about Vedanta is that it says this. The place where the problem is, is you. But it says something else very interesting as well. The place where the solution is, is also you. Now this is very important to understand because in the spiritual world, when the people are interested in the spiritual things, often there's this kind of um, idea that one day somewhere there's a better place, a spiritual place, or there's a higher self somewhere, or you, God is some somewhere, you know, some other place. But what Vedanta says is that God is not in some other place. What you're seeking is not in some other place. What you're seeking is right here, and it's right here where you are as well as your problem. The human problem is right here where you are as well. Now, <clears throat> when they say that the solution is right here, what they're talking about is the solution is you. And that may seem strange, but what is suggested is that what you are in reality is the solution. What you are in reality and what is suggested by the teaching that what you are in reality is this awareness that's right here that you're not anything that you can think about or see as an object you your nature is this very awareness that is here listening to these words that's hearing these sounds that just simply takes things in now this is important because if 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 I could really see that I was awareness, first of all, I'd be very secure because awareness can never be damaged by anything, it can't be destroyed. The physical body, of course, can be destroyed. But awareness, it doesn't come into existence, it doesn't leave. So basically, it is free, it is very, very secure because it's completely free from harm. Secondly, awareness is like a television or a mirror, it just takes in everything, it doesn't go, I don't like that, I hate that, it accommodates everything, so there's no friction, so that intrinsic to awareness is peace, so we have intrinsic to awareness is security, peace, and lastly, because awareness hasn't got any size, it's sufficient, nothing can add to it and make it more, or nothing can take it away, it is what they call fullness or happiness, Ananda is, a, is the, the Hindu term for that. Now, or the Sanskrit term, sorry. Now, so what the whole uh, Vedantic uh, enterprise is about is discovering what you actually are. And you are this non-dimensional, simple, present awareness that is here. And this awareness is always here. It is never attained. You can't get it. However, we can be ignorant of it. And this is why self-knowledge is considered so important. Because if we already have the happiness and fullness that we're already seeking, the only thing that's stopping us or the distance between ourselves and that happiness is ignorance. And so that by knowledge, what Vedanta means by knowledge, that ignorance is swept away or resolved. And we, but literally just simply become what we've always been. We become consciously what we are. 
Now, Swami Dayananda, in the Bhagavad Gita course, gives a very interesting uh, little little talk on this, and I'm going to read it out because he can say it very, very well. But it'll give you some sense of what I'm talking about. We're not talking about anything mystical or strange here. We're talking about simply discovering what we are and and becoming to appreciate that fact so much that suffering is no longer present. We have to take two things into consideration. First, people are not happy, and secondly, people are always busy fulfilling their desires in order to be happy. They are always hopeful that happiness will come because they do become happy occasionally. Tomorrow will be better, they say. Everything will be wonderful when this is over. It seems, therefore, that people who pursue their desires are always working for happiness, whereas those who have given up desires have no way of being happy. That's what it seems like. If I'm not going to pursue happiness, it would look, it would follow that if I don't pursue happiness, my life's going to be a real drag. Now, the Lord Krishna corrected this train of thinking by saying that such a person is happy with oneself. In himself or herself, the wise person is happy. Everyone is happy in oneself anyway but always because of something else. Now, here's the most important statement here. It's going to come now. Here, and we're talking about here too, here, right where the problem is, here, without any external props or circumstances, without expecting or depending upon any condition whatsoever, the person is happy. Now, this isn't something magical or mystical. It is simply being yourself not being confused about who you are. From a Vedantic perspective, we're confused because we, instead of understanding we are this present awareness, we think we're sadness, we think we're frustration, we think we're, we're unhappiness, we think we're our physical suffering, we think we're our body, all of these types of things. So I'll read this again. Here, without any external props or circumstances, without expecting or depending upon any condition whatsoever, the person is happy. The analogy of a sugar crystal is useful here. Simply by being a sugar crystal, a sugar crystal is sweet. It does not require a sweetening agent to be sweet because it all is already saturated with sweetness, which is why it is sugar crystal. Therefore, it cannot be sweetened further. Similarly, one who is happy does not depend on any other object or situation to be happy. By one's own awakening to oneself alone, one is happy. Now, the point I want to emphasize here is awakening to what self? Some sort of higher self? No. Awakening to this self that's here. We have a half knowledge that this self exists. We have a half knowledge that we exist. But we don't necessarily understand the content of what we mean by the word I. We take the content to mean our our mental reactions, uh, 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 we, what we look like, our ideas about ourselves, all of these sort of things. But, what, but that is because we have confused what we are with things that we are not. Now, the whole point of Vedanta is the discovery of what is the meaning of this I, this first person singular. What is the content? When I say I, what does that mean? And this is the subject matter of Vedanta.